see, I'm delighted, really delighted to be speaking with Bill Arsene because part of the resources will be speaking with order members who have a degenerative neuron disease or care for them. So I'm really delighted that we're going to kick off with Bill Arsene. Now, I, I didn't know Bill Arsene uh, before I, had, I made contact with her. Um, as a result of the Abiram Trust started to look at uh, degenerative neuronal disease in the order. And I was immediately, immediately struck, Vilasny, by you as a force of nature. Um, you're clear, you're articulate, you're honest, you're really straightforward and straight with your experience uh, of yourself and with others um, whilst having dementia. So. I'm, I'm delighted, Velasny. Delighted. So, <laughs> can we start, Velasny, by you just giving us a brief summary of how dementia has, has developed and affected your life? Um, well, I was um, officially diagnosed three mm. years ago. Mm. Um, but when I think about it, I realize that I definitely already had the condition at least two years before mm. I was diagnosed. Mm. Um, the symptoms in my case mm. were confusion, making it really hard for me to manage uh, any kind of, of schedule, mm. um, which would, of course, throw other people as well as myself. Mm. Um, and forget, forget short-term memory loss. Mm. Uh, these are very inconvenient mm. uh, symptoms, uh, and they affect everything you do mm. and everybody who comes in contact with. Mm. Um, now, in my case, it's vascular dementia, which is brought on by a series of mini strokes. Mm. And I know I started having mini strokes before 2017. Mm. Uh, and but, uh, uh, yes, they were taken seriously, especially mm. if they affected me physically. And then, you know, doctors will uh, give you an MRI scan. And mm. I've had uh, five so far. But the first one, which was after the left, mm. uh, physical left side symptom, they were deeply shocked to discover that my brain was already quite seriously damaged. Mm. I'd obviously had several strokes previously, um, but there were many strokes and I didn't take them that seriously, uh, nor did anyone else. It was small things, not nothing major and um, because people are so afraid of dementia, mm. uh, and I was terrified of the very thought of it, um, uh, people are always saying, oh, don't worry, you know, I did that also. And still, you know, when I say, oh, I got on the wrong bus, ah, oh, I got on the wrong bus twice this year. Uh, yes, but I've done it 10 times. And um, I, or something else of that sort, immediately, it's things that everybody do, mm. but only occasionally. Mm. Uh, and when you really develop the condition so mm. that you're diagnosable, everybody is diagnosed quite a long, long time after. Mm. They've already developed the condition. Mm. You learn, or at least I was determined to learn, to undo some of the damage, to reverse the symptoms, because I believe that's always possible. 
Certainly I've done it, even though the neuroscientist who diagnosed me didn't believe I could do that because I was too old. Um, I had had a stroke to my frontal lobe, possibly more than one to the frontal lobe. And that is the area which uh, control, this helps you control your emotions, helps you work with your emotions. And I was screaming at people with rage. Mm -hmm. I couldn't control it. Mm -hmm. I thought, oh, I, you know, I've had it. I, I'm going to be in a very bad tempered. I mean, seriously bad tempered. And fear. That was the other area. I was starting to panic. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, I thought, well, there's nothing I can do about it. But I've worked with children mm. with severe brain damage, and I know they can learn. Mm. And I just couldn't believe that I too couldn't learn. So that when I was screaming at my carer one day, I just got up and left the room. Um, because Mm. I knew that leaving the trigger <laughs> uh, to your rage is, is the first step. Um, and I sat down quietly in out of the way place. And it took one hour to calm myself down. When you've got a problem as serious as I had, I had to learn to stop making myself angry. Mm -hmm. It took a few months. Mm -hmm. But at the end of those months, I didn't even get angry. Somehow, I had re the, the um, new neurons in your brain, you have billions of those, mm -hmm. you have a huge number. Those that had been damaged were replaced by neurons that I helped teach <laughs> mm. to do the job that the ones that had died used to do. So th this is really interesting, Velasi, really, really interesting, of course. Um, I, I'm just wondering, do you think your spiritual practice helped you work Enorm with, enormously? enormously. You have to believe. <laughs> yeah. uh, and if you believe and practice yeah. the values of mm. Buddhism, mm. the Dharma, the many, many teachings mm. are invaluable. Mm. They give you a direction in which to move. Mm. Mm. They help you to recognize what that you've got a problem that's hampering you mm. from leading a full rich life from mm. overcoming your problems mm. because you've got to know where you're going mm. and you've got to know what to believe in it's really interesting so, so do you think your dharma life uh like you say, gave you gave you a direction, gave you something to point to. Because my dad had dementia um, before he died, and and I'm just wondering, could I could I have taught him? I did try and teach him new things, but there didn't seem to be a will. There was nothing like you had, like like you have in your life that that gave a direction, that gave a, a vision of how well, things. Well, I've asked myself that question so many times oh, have you? Yeah. because my husband. Had mm. Alzheimer's, yeah. and he hated himself, mm. and he was deeply ashamed of himself, mm. and he had a violent temper. Mm. And I keep thinking, if I had been a Buddhist, because I hadn't come across Buddhism mm. then, mm. Um, could I have helped mm. him? Mm. Well, I don't know. You see, you mm. have to want to help yourself. Mm. You can't help someone who is determined mm. <laughs> uh, to go a certain way. Mm. Uh, but somehow you've got to try and inspire them mm. uh, to want yeah. to. Yeah. 
change in a helpful way. Mm. And here, you know, this is where the Dharma helps because it tells you what's helpful. Mm. It tells you which are the kleshas, mm. which are the hindrances, mm. so that you know that that's something you need to work on. Mm. That's a way to go. When you're deeply unhappy, when you're ashamed, when you're furious, or any of those things. And when you hate yeah. yourself. Now, that's, mm. that's absolutely primary. And I think that happens to far too many people with dementia because they lose skills they were mm. proud of. Mm. Um, they lose abilities that they used to define themselves with. Mm. And they start, you know, thinking they're terrible, hopeless mm. people. Mm. And that's what you have to try and help a person. This is why we're at a real advantage being order members. We've worked on these essential qualities for years mm. already. Mm. Mm. So mm. we have an advantage. Mm. And then, but if it's somebody in your family, mm. uh, you have that's difficult, I believe, but I don't know. Um, because love is a immensely powerful quality. And if you if it's somebody you really love who is suffering, well, it's possible that through your deep care, you can help in ways that are, well, it feels miraculous what you can do. Mm. But mainly you have to inspire. Mm. You have to help them to want to mm. become, um, undo. <laughs> Of uh, the damage that they blame themselves for having. Ah, that's interesting. So, do you think blame is what adds to this this heap of lack of self meta of hate? Well, it does with me. Mm. Um, that um, it's very hard not to get upset when you do something that seems incredibly stupid. And you do it again and again. Yeah, yeah. You know. You, yeah. Uh, and then you, you know, you feel ashamed, and uh, mm. and you think it's your fault, and all mm. of that. Uh, so, so. Mm. so, how would you want people to respond to you? Say somebody has witnessed you uh, doing something again and again, you know, a few times. How? What? What would be the most supportive thing somebody could do for you? Uh, well, uh, you want to find out how I feel about yeah, what okay. I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, you want to help me to realize that really it's not such a terrible thing. Yeah. Uh, and um, you want me, you want to ask questions mm -hmm. to ask me to become aware maybe, of what uh, sets me off. We need that awareness. Mindfulness is absolutely key. Mm. What's needed is understanding. Mm. And for that, you need, at least I'm finding, I need to study biology, chemistry, neurology, psychology, mm. All of those things I need mm. to be aware of mm. and to learn. And so, so yeah. you know, you can learn about yourself. Mm. And if you're helping someone with dementia, yeah. do some of that learning yourself. I, I just have a question about how, how can um, leaders retreats help you, you know, fully engage uh, with retreats? Um, they remind me of the things that are really important. Yeah. And now I've had a serious problem 
in relating to other people as complete human beings mm -hmm. with, I would absolute respect for their own, their own ideas, their own way of developing and everything. Going on um, Vesanta's retreat, he spoke about the dukkha of feeling separate, of being separate. And I realized, yes, I feel separate, a separate person. Mm -hmm. This is something I must work on because it is dukkha. And there's no reason for me to have to suffer that way. And I, I was just wondering if, um, if, if your dementia can actually heighten that separation from... Um, yes, because mm. you think you're different from other people. Mm. You can't do what other people can do. So it, it's learning, it's learning um, new ways of, of how to interact with the world, but all, as well as continuing with your practice and, and using practice to, to well, uh, both in terms of samatha and vipassana. I mean, this is, this is really encouraging, isn't it, for people who have um, degenerative neuronal disease in that it's not the end, you know. It, it can be brought onto the path. I just wanted to ask you some a couple of final questions. First of all, I know that you went you attended an order convention a few years ago. Um, how did that happen? Was was it easy to get that kind of support and 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 how did you go about it? Um, well, I had to have a carer. Yeah, and that turned out to be a major problem. Mm. because most of my, my friends and carers were meters or they were not all you know, order members. Yeah. And, um, uh. Uh, mm -hmm. oh, I can't remember his name now. <laughs> A very, very kind, caring order member. Sangajit. Yes. Went to great trouble. Yeah. I mean, he advertised it everywhere he could think of. He yeah. spoke to everyone who he could think of to try and get someone. Mm. And I ended up with a wonderful carer, mm. a man who was a senior nurse mm. and who was kind and curious and mm -hmm. you know and thoughtful he had all the possible qu supportive qualities mm. um and it, it was a wonderful experience mm. but i almost didn't go because i couldn't find a carer mm. but i need again i need help i need help <laughs> mm. i'm very dependent mm. on other people you did it you did it, and uh, I, I asked that question for uh, deliberately in terms of that, um, in terms, just because you have something which you th think might be an impediment to, to get, into, for example, on a large order gathering like convention, they, there are it's it's worth exploring ways of getting there, and I think I mm. think this is something which we maybe have to look at as an order. You know, how are we going to support each other? get on retreat, you know, as we get uh, older and as more subject to sickness and so on. Yes. Mm. Oh, yes, definitely. Because it started quite a ways back. Um, I have several medical conditions. Mm. I have a heart condition, which mm. put me at risk of being dashed off to hospital in the middle mm. of a retreat. And... Yeah, you know, things like that. They want you to have a carer. They want you mm. to have someone there responsible to dash mm. you off if necessary. Mm. Um, because whoever's leading the retreat, uh, you know, they can't just drop what they're doing and take you. You have mm. so you, and when you've got dementia, you need someone to help you navigate the <laughs> yeah. the retreat. Yeah, and it's. It's not easy to find the right person 
yeah. to volunteer. And then oh. you have to pay for them. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to. I mean, sometimes mm. a person says, oh, I'll pay half of it. Or mm. it's mm. okay. I've already paid. And mm. um, you don't, you know, I don't, you don't need to pay me back. But mostly you have mm. to pay. And once you are on retreat, um, I know we've spoken about this before, but you found it quite useful if, if, the, if the leaders um, do certain emphasize certain things or to help you stay engaged with the retreat can you can you mind us what those kind of things are you know what what what's useful into for a, a retreat leader to do to help you engage with the retreat well it is helpful that they know yes um you've got a certain condition yeah and sometimes you have to educate them <laughs> yeah. about a condition. Certainly, yeah. like dementia, there is yes. so much misunderstanding. Yeah. Um, so you need to sort of prepare them. Being, I mean, like on this Kamala Sheila retreat, I was struggling. Mm. And his response was so warm and caring and he said how pleased he was that I was on the retreat, <laughs> despite the fact that mm. <laughs> I was floundering away. Mm -hmm. um, and I was getting really upset because I couldn't connect mm. my camera. Mm -hmm. And he likes people to have their camera on. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, he made me feel really comfortable mm -hmm. about being on that retreat, even though um, I, mm. I wasn't. Mm. Well, my own, that's my own ideas. Um, mm. But um, I felt welcome. Mm. And um, mm. that's important. Mm. 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 And um, of course, you're frequently late <laughs> because yeah. you've forgotten. Yeah. You never get there. Um, and in my case, I have a hearing problem. And that's it, that's a serious problem. I mean, obviously, mm. if you can't hear what's being said, uh, so people have to wear my hearing device. They have to wear something around their neck, and they have a stick that they need to keep not far from their mouths. Uh, and that's a nuisance. So mm. try not to be too irritated, <laughs> to mm. show irritation. Yeah. 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 too much yeah. uh, and, and work on yourself to help yeah. yourself get over it because you're suffering <laughs> yeah. not just me you also yeah. are suffering so, so in other words we're all the, the whole retreat is practicing as a community including uh, being patient with you for example and, and that is part of the, the, the kind of communal practice of the retreat it's not just it about... should be i yeah. mean it is it is part of buddhist practice to be yeah. kind and patient yeah. and yeah. you know so yes you're you're helping yourself as well as yeah and and uh, just to just occur to me that we're also trying to create spiritual community what be it around our centers be it when we go on retreat we're trying to create a new spiritual community and uh, and part of that will be Patience, tolerance, understanding of people who who mm. might be struggling. Yeah. Mm. So there's a, there's a win win situation, but isn't there? Everybody yes. learns from each other. Yes. Mm. Yes. Mm. I was just wondering, Vilasni, is there anything, any final words you'd like to say, or do you think you've said most of what we want to say? Well, I, I do want to say that being able uh, to be part of the order mm. of the community mm. makes all the difference. Mm. And the wonderful thing is that the order has acted as a family mm. towards me, mm. has given me support and consideration and availability uh, that exists in a family. And the love, you know, mm. it's mm. it's amazing mm. uh, what I receive. Mm. And um, I'm deeply, deeply grateful. Well, that's wonderful to hear, Vilasni. That's wonderful to hear that the, the, the order is, is 
works for you so well. Mm-hmm. We'll end there today on that on mm. that positive note. So thank you very much for lasting for your time and and thank I- you for your support. Fantastic. <laughs> You're helping a dream of mine come yes. true, and that's wonderful. Yeah, it is. Well, there's, there'll be more to come, Vilasni. There's more to come. Uh, I, and I hope our listeners have found this useful in, in one way, or hopefully many ways. Uh, so thank you. Thank you. Okay. Mm-hmm.